Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, I've been doing a little bit of thinking in the midst of me uh, tracking Hurricane Barrel here, and also looking back at tornado season. I just it kind of dawned on me that we're already in July here. It's crazy to think about, really. Years gone by fast, and before we know it, summer's going to be over. So. I figured, why not uh, take a look at what could be possible for fall here. Now, I normally don't do this. This is maybe once in a blue moon type of thing where we'll do an outlook for the uh, upcoming season. We'll make updates as we go. But to go this early is a little bit of a new thing for me. So just want to make it clear that none of this is set in stone that I'm talking about here. This is just basically an outlook that we're looking at well in advance. And we're going to be continually seeing updates to this. So what you're seeing now is very much prone to changing. With that disclaimer out the way, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. So as far as the three-month average is concerned, now I know what you're probably thinking, seeing this temperature map right here, you're thinking, oh dear, we're going to have a super hot fall. And that might partially be the case. But as we know, the temperatures are usually starting to drop by some point i would say towards maybe mid september sometimes it takes a little bit longer we can look at october even november but some key things to talk about here are the areas that we have where that uh higher confidence of course towards the northeast towards the deep south and even towards the southwest heading into the four corners region we're probably going to see the highest uh, temperature anomalies here which is where these uh, percentages are based off of more so during the early part of September we are going to be undergoing a little bit of a change here with the Enzo and if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about it's the El Nino La Nina type of deal that's actually an oscillation in the Pacific Ocean but the water those uh changes that occur with those waters out there greatly affects our weather then also another thing to make note of is Alaska itself here and why and I'm I bet you probably I bet you you're probably thinking what does Alaska have to do with anything over here to the eastern half of the US anything past the plains actually a lot because usually whenever you see an increase in weather or cooler weather over towards southern Alaska usually it ends up working its way into the lower 48 so what I'm seeing with that is an increase in cooler weather over the course of those three months leading into the season. So we are going to see a notable shift at some point within this three month period. Obviously with it being so far out, I can't say when. All I can do is just kind of give you the data that I have available to me. And this is the same data that most professionals are using. So it's kind of, Kind of hard to say what's exactly going to happen when we get into fall, especially since fall technically starts in mid-September. But based off the signals that we're seeing here, I have I have a pretty good inclination that we're going to see a notable shift, especially towards the northern states. Also looking at precipitation, we are, of course, going to start to see a little bit of a downtrend with that. And I think a big part of why that is actually is going to be because of our shift in the Enzo, as I mentioned before. So some of you might remember early in the year, especially if you've been viewing the channel for a bit. Towards the beginning of the year, I talked about how we were in a strong El Nino where the war waters in the Pacific were well above average. We were almost at a 2.0 on here. So basically, we're going by temperatures in degrees celsius here if you're at two degrees celsius above average here or in this uh enzo region here usually you're in a very strong el nino that's near a record el nino strong el nino actually starts at 1.5 but what's happened throughout the year we've progressively shifted from a strong el nino to a neutral enzo by the time we got into late spring and now we're on track to actually being in a La Nina, which is where we have those waters at negative 0.5 degrees. So we're actually getting cooler waters over towards this region. And this affects our weather pattern over the area. How that does is you'll usually see, you'll see this jet stream over here towards the northern tier of the states, bring in more cold air. Northwest is usually going to be a little bit more active. 
and then over towards the Great Lakes northeast usually you'll have a much more active weather pattern towards the south as we head towards fall and winter you'll see more dry air and kind of right in between that zone sometimes can be a little battle area you could end up getting a mixture of both it also tends to be a little bit warmer than average so we're going to start to see this shift take place right around the fall there's actually a la nina watch that's been issued by the weather prediction center as well for the united states as a whole so Keep that in mind as we go further along into the year here. So looking at the model data, and it's, this is going to be a quick video because it's not like I have a lot to work with here, but there's a couple other things that I like to look at along with the uh, Enzo pattern that we have in that re that we have forecasted in the region here. It's two particular oscillations. It's one that's towards the the North Pole here, it's called the Arctic Oscillation or the AO, and then the NAO, which is the North Atlantic Oscillation. So right now we're in a positive phase, and we're going to expect that to continue to be the case as we get into August and then into September as well. That trend is pretty much going to hold at least through the early part of October as well. We may see some change in November. Like I said, I'm not putting too too much faith in this considering the fact that we're so far out so by the next update this could look entirely different but just basing things off of what i'm seeing here i do see a point where we're going to begin to see that shift begin to occur here i'm starting to also see that warmer air mass off to the southwest once again so it'll be interesting to see how things develop there is a couple things in particular with the fall that i'm concerned with one of those could be severe weather of course, I don't know how many people actually know this about La Nina, but La Nina also historically can allot for a much more intense hurricane season. Considering what we're seeing now, it wouldn't surprise me if we get a little bit more action as we get later into the year, but that's typical historically anyway. So as we get towards August, September, we're going to definitely have to pay attention here. So as we continue to go forward here, let's go ahead and take a look at what our temperature anomalies are looking like right now. Keep in mind, this is also measured in degrees in Celsius right now, not Fahrenheit. I can give you a rough estimate as to what those values are going to be. But as of right now, though, as we look towards September, main point of focus as far as above average temperatures, right along the delta here, the Mississippi Delta, and over towards the Southern Plains, we're going to be dealing with those above average temperatures. So we go to the following month. Here's that cold air starting to sneak in. And if you actually remember, look at that. See the correlation? And as time goes on, you continue to kind of see that coming into play here. And then as we look towards November, remember how I mentioned that ridge that starts to build out towards the southwest? You can also see the correlation with that as well. So over towards the southwest and maybe even towards the southern plains, we might have above average temperatures. The storm track is really going to play a role in how a lot of our precipitation is going to look. But where I see this clash of air masses coming into play for severe weather might arouse my interest in particular due to the storm track. Because while, yes, this general storm track kind of favors more weather towards, let's say, the northwest, maybe over towards the midwest more, we do have anomalies, of course. We had an anomaly this year. It just happened with barrel. Didn't expect Barrel to strengthen all the way up to a Category 5 at one point. So use that as an example and a reminder to keep your eyes on the weather. But I'm interested in this region in regards to severe weather towards Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. And then, of course, also towards the southeast even. It could be a couple of different points where we have those clashes of air masses that you would look for when it comes to thunderstorm development. So... We'll definitely be keeping an eye on Ohio Valley and Dixie Alley as well. A little bit of a weather lingo for you. But in any case, as we go further along here, you can also even see that we're going to see an increase in moisture over towards the Great Lakes. And I'm happy to see this for this region in particular because they've been needing a lot more, a lot of rain. They've been struggling with drought through the first half of the year here. Apologize for the Discord notifications. As we continue to go forward here, notice that right now south looks dry for September and also towards the southern plains. Watch how we flip that the following month here a little bit. We start to see an increase in activity towards the Gulf. More Gulf moisture coming into play means maybe the Tennessee and the South Tennessee Valleys and the Southeast Ohio Valley as well 
come in start to uh come into an increased amount of activity like i said a lot of that's going to have to do with storm tracks also the wild card being tropical systems as well and then watch how we flip again as we head towards november fall can be kind of a tumultuous month especially as we start to shift from into that uh la nina from the neutral enzo it's just kind of a wild card along with the other wild cards we have here like i said also think that uh tropics could come into play here especially given the forecast that we've had for that season but notice as we get towards let's say i would say maybe probably the middle part of november this is just a rough guess here i would say that we start to comfortably shift into that la nina pattern here based off what i'm seeing off model guidance as well we're pretty well rooted into the la nina in the meantime and it's going to linger throughout the entire winter I would probably suspect that La Nina maybe ends next spring. So that'll be interesting to see how things kind of pan out with that. But ultimately though, if we go back and we review everything, we're kind of on a little bit of a hair trigger here. We could flip either way in the early part of early part of fall, but I think towards the later part of fall, we'll really start to become more established with that La Nina, that uh, classic La Nina pattern, if you will. You can see it also wet out towards the Northwest, just like we were looking at with that diagram over towards the Great the uh, Great Lakes here. Kind of a mixed bag over here towards the Northeast, but I do think the, the storm track is going to favor this region a bit more. It's always a mystery though, because the US is actually affected by two jet streams. The one to the North is the polar jet, and then we have the subtropical jet. The subtropical jet is still kind of a mystery at this point, that of which of course I don't really have any clarity on. Because looking months and months in advance, it's kind of hard to get access to that. But in any case, though, we'll be making an update as soon as we get the time and get the resources to do so. But until then, I want to say thank you all for watching. And I'll see you very soon. Until then, Tom Edelhead, Weatherman, signing off.